Hello again, it's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to talk about music and math, in particular how we use guitars to make music and the math behind that. So what I'm going to do is I'm tell you a little bit about just how, how music is structured, how musical intervals are structured, how the original concept of music structures didn't really work all that well, and how we change that to make guitars work. So here we go. All right now. Music is made of something called intervals. And so if you uh, look at, at some musical notes here, uh, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, oh boy, I'm running out of room, G sharp, there we go. You see all that? Yeah, we can, yeah, we can work with that. All right, these are some notes. Now, I know that there's a B flat is over here. Okay, I, I know there's flats over there here, too. I'm just going to work with sharps for right now. It's the same idea. Um, notes are given names. Why letters? Who knows? Music has developed over thousands and thousands of years and with the input of God knows how many people. So there's sometimes there's more than one name for the same thing. So we've decided to use uh, letters for notes. They could have been anything, red, blue, green, whatever. We were using letters. Also, there's this little uh, checkerboard thing that means sharp. Sharp means we raise the pitch, okay? So the, the A sharp is, has a higher pitch than A. I've got it written down right here. Higher pitches are going down. So I'm going to call it increasing pitch. Okay, increasing pitch. Now, why there's no note between B and C and between E and F, I don't know. Um, what I've really written down here are the keys on the piano, right? Where there's a sharp or a flat, that's a black key. Where there isn't, that's a white key. Look at a piano, you'll notice that every once in a while it looks like there's a black key missing. Well, there's one of them, there's the other one. So if you want to make scales from notes, you pick out a selection of these, right? There's eight notes in a scale. And everybody likes to work with the key of C because C doesn't have any sharps or flats in it. If you take all the black keys off the piano, you get the key of C. So um, that's how that works. But what, what are the ma what's the math here? Well, music is defined in terms of intervals. And the interval is the frequency ratio between any two successive notes. All right. If you can define the frequency ratio between any two successive notes, you can make a scale. You can make anything you want. All right, so this is what we've got. Now, the person who is credited with coming up with um, what we call Western musical scales is Pythagoras. Now, Pythagoras is what we would now call a cult leader. He was. And so things that are attributed to Pythagoras aren't always his. They're one of his followers sometimes came up with it. Strange guy, but had some great ideas. And one of them is that... Uh, music could be de defined in terms of ratios of small integers. He had this idea that there's two steps, two uh, intervals. Okay, this thing right here, when you go from one note to another, that's called, well, it's called a semitone, a half tone, or a half step. Take your pick. Okay, so that interval right there, we're, I'm going to call it a half step. Okay? And a whole step, and it doesn't really matter which one I pick, I'll pick uh, those two perhaps. That's a whole step. Half step and whole step. Once you know what a half step and a whole step is, in theory you should be able to do a, uh, write down frequencies for any note you want. Um, so this is, if I say this ratio here, call it ratio one half, and I'll call that F1 over F0, so that's F1 and that's F0. Well, Pythagoras decided that was going to be 250, whoops, 256 over 243. Ugh. Not, not the nicest uh, ratio there, but there you have it. Okay, so ratio of a whole step, and I'll, I'll call that a superscript 1, that's going to be F how are we going to do that? It's really F2 over F0 because there's two, two half steps there. That was 9 over 8. Okay? So the, the frequency ratio there is 256 over 243. Ooh. And the, when you have two of them, you get 9 over 8. Based on that, you should be able to make any set of scales you want. There's a problem. It doesn't work. 
Okay, it looks great. The mathematics look okay. Try to make it work. Here's what happens. Let's go for three whole steps. Okay, we'll start anyway, it doesn't really matter. Well, let's start there. There's one, there's two, and there's three. So I'll start at A and I'll wind up at D sharp. That's three steps. There's a step, there's a step, there's a step. Well, if there's a step, okay, so it goes three steps. Okay, well that should be 9 over 8 to get me from there to there times 9 over 8 times 9 over 8. So it's 9 over 8 cubed. And that comes out to be, uh, let's see, do I have it? Boy, I better have it here. There it is. 1.424, that's the frequency ratio. Okay, there's if you do three whole steps. Now, three whole steps better equal six half steps. I should be able to go, let me, let me erase some of this stuff here. Okay. I'll get rid of all that stuff. And let's see, get rid of that. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Gets me to the same place, right? So, this ought to work. So, let's see. 256 over 243 to the sixth power now because I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 gets me to the same place and that comes out to 1.367. Um, those aren't the same. In fact, since our ears are very sensitive and we can hear the difference between you know 1 percent in, in different ratios, or 1% between ratios, that's terrible. That's not even close. Okay, That's not going to work. All right, so the history of music in, the, in uh, the West, anyway, is almost the history of what's called temperament. Temperament systems are the systems we use to take this, which is aesthetically pleasing but doesn't actually work in real life, and trying to make it work. And there's all kinds of temperament systems. There's well tempering and just tempering and equal tempering and probably a bunch of others. Um, classical music people, if you've ever heard a, a collection of pieces called the well-tempered clavier. Clavier is the German word for piano and it was written by Beethoven or Bach, I can't remember which one. Um, to show how well tempering one of these scale, these tempering systems worked on pianos and worked pretty well. Guitars don't use that. Guitars use something called equal tempering. Well, what's equal tempering? Well, the idea here, oh, and by the way, all the different systems of, of tempering here, you can go out and look up intonate or uh, uh, intervals, Pythagorean intervals on uh, Wikipedia or wherever. There is an entire table of these things, and you will go blind and crazy trying to figure this out. I think that's maybe what people are doing in music school, is learning about all this stuff and memorizing all this stuff. The other way to do this, a much, e much simpler way to do this, is called equal tempering. Okay, And what we're going to do is we're going to say that every interval has exactly the same ratio. Okay. So this ratio is some number r, r, r. This is going to be r squared. Okay, they have to. The math has to work out. All right. Now what you can do here is, uh, if you notice that when you go uh, 12 steps, there's actually going to be an a down here again. Okay, if you go 12 steps, you go up an octave. So you go up from there, there to one, two. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm not sure you can see. Oh, you can. There's the A down there. There's 12. 12 steps in an octave. Okay? So R to the 12th has to equal 2. All right? It has to because to go from here to here is a doubling of frequency. An octave is a doubling of frequency. Well, that means R has to equal the 12th root of 2. It's one of the strangest numbers you'll ever use routinely, and it's 1.0595 something, okay? That's enough, pretty much. You don't need more than that for most purposes, okay? So this is equal tempering, and because you can do this now, if I want to know how to go from A to D, I go, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all right? So to get from there to there, the frequency ratio is r to the sixth. If I go from 
here to here to here to here. It's r squared to the third power, also r to the sixth. So everything works out. It doesn't matter where you start, you're going to get the right answer always. Now, does it give you the Pythagorean ratios? No, it doesn't. No, it gives you a few of them. It gives you the octave. Now, but what else it does? I, I, I got a little guitar here so I can use on camera. All right, this is a little, it's not, it's, it's shaped like a ukulele, but it's actually a guitar. It has six strings on it. So if I grab a chord right there, that's an E chord. If I want to slide it up to maybe F, I can do that. If I want a G, I do that. If I want an A, I do that. If I want a B, I do that. Okay, I can just slide this up and down the neck easy, easy, easy. Okay, so there's, let's see, what's that right uh, there? That's a C. Okay, and you notice I'm just looking at patterns. Because of this system, I can just look at patterns. All right, so there I go. Because this works so well, these frets get to be straight, and I can just slide my fingers up and down the neck. If you're talking to a horn player and you want to change keys, sometimes that's a big problem. For a guitar player, oh, you want to change keys? You want to go up two half steps, two semitones? There. I don't care. You want to go down three? Let's see. One, two, three. I'm good. No problem. Give me any weird uh, scale you want. I'm just sliding up and down the neck. That's what equal tempering does for you. That's the math that makes it work. All right. Hope this helps, and I'll talk to you next time.